Yo, spoiler warnings moving forward. So if you're not trying to get spoiled by the Boruto manga, then you're going to have to get out. If you're still here, go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead, slide over, click the subscribe, and let's get ready for the video. Alright guys, welcome to the channel, it's your man the Grass Ninja, you know how we do it, we are hitting that Boruto chapter 69 predictions man, so chapter 68 breakdown already happened, if you want to check it out it's in the description. Today we are theorizing about chapter 69, we're making predictions for the future, um, we already know for sure the next chapters are going to heavily involve Amado and Ida, we're going to get some interactions between them and we are expecting some huge revelations to unfold and hopefully we can shed some light on the matter between these two mysterious characters so from what we already know and understand right the current situation is amado has made a shit ton of cyborgs in the past that overpowered jigen all right since they were so powerful jigen ordered them all to be scrapped and destroyed ida and damon were two of these cyborgs now they avoided this whole order and this whole thing of getting destroyed by jigen's order right Ida and Damon, their abilities are so incredibly broken. They have so many hacks. Ida is confident that her and Damon will be able to take down Code even if his limiters get removed. All right. Now, it's important for us to say this. Ida and Damon, they still have abilities that have yet to be revealed. So as of chapter 68, we don't know of all of their powers and stuff. So in chapter 69, it's fair game that some of these new abilities get fleshed out. Or some of these new, uh, yeah, some of these new powers get fleshed out, right? So here's what we do know, though. Ida's abilities is she has Simpno Jutsu and the Senray Gun, all right? So now the Senray Gun basically allows her to spy on everyone on the planet. And if you can travel to other planets via teleportation, she can spy on you there, too. Now, she can also peer into the past, so if she's focused on a current event conversation, it doesn't matter if she misses anything, because she can look into anything that's happened in the past as long as she was born and she was on the planet at that time, all right? So she can see into the past up to her birth and anything on any planet, anywhere, as long as she can focus on the characters there. Now, her other ability, the Simp no Jutsu, basically allows her to steal the hearts of men and women alike and basically make them fall in love with her. And as they fall in love with her, it becomes harder and harder to deny her wishes. So she can basically make simps. And uh, yeah, that's pretty scary. So it doesn't matter. And the only exceptions to the rule are being blood relative or by being an Otsutsuki, all right? So now, since we talk about blood relatives, her little brother, the second cyborg, is also incredibly dangerous. Now, Damon has an overpowered ability of his own, which allows him to reflect anybody's intentions to harm him or put him in harm's way. Now, this is so deadly and so brutal because the reflection power he has will activate regardless of whether or not Damon is even aware that there's a threat. So he can activate this ability regardless of whether or not he even knows there's an attack incoming, all right? So now we're under the impression, right, that Amado, Big Dog Amado, is solely responsible for the creations of Ida, Damon, right? He's, cr he's solely responsible for the creations of their abilities, right, their augmentations. So that would mean Amado has the knowledge and possibly the technology required to recreate said powers. So he could recreate the Simp no Jutsu uh, ability. He could recreate the Reflection ability. He could recreate the Senray Gun, and all this stuff would end up in the hands of Konoha, or at least in his control since he's a citizen of Konoha, right? So why hasn't he does that? Does he not want these superpowers to fall in the hands of Konoha? Does he not think the world is ready? Or is he holding out, right? So Amado's always holding out information, right? It's his character's job. So it's clear as day Amado's holding out information in regards to Kawaki and in regards to Kawaki's karma. But we can't forget that Amado is still holding out information when it comes to the Otsutsuki clan, right? So how does Amado know so much about the Otsutsuki, right? Now, and how long has he actually been working with Jigen and Inkara and all that stuff? Because I feel like those two questions need to be tackled in Chapter 69 if Amado does not have some sort of resistance to Ida's abilities, all right? So when we look at Amado and Ida and their connection and stuff, we need to look at that Land of Snow facility where the cyborgs were meant to be disposed of, right? So what is Amado's involvement in the Land of Snow? Because 
Here's what we know. We know it's a scrapyard for the super-powered cyborgs, right? We know Amado was responsible for creating all of those, so he was probably responsible for the creation of whatever devices were used to destroy them. But this facility is actually run by Boro and his cult following. So it's important that we remember Boro and his cult. They worship the Otsutsuki. Now, Boro didn't really worship the Otsutsuki. He played everybody. But his cult followers genuinely believe that stuff. So they worship the Otsutsuki. Those cult worshippers are much like code, all right? So here's what we have. We have a facility that's known for conducting these human experiments. They create their own scientific ninja weaponry and they perform inhumane rituals on people, all right? So all that stuff doesn't scream Amado. That has to scream Amado. Rituals, scientific weaponry, human experimentation, right? Now, the only other thing that I think is crazy is that there is an Otsutsuki connection there. When Shikamaru got this information from Sasuke, he said he was going to send out a scout team to do some recon on the facility. So if they go inside and they start uh, gathering information from what it's actually, uh, what's actually in there, that's a huge facility that we're looking at, right? So I wouldn't be surprised if they stumble upon Otsutsuki propaganda because it's it's being run by a bunch of cult members who worship the Otsutsuki. Boro had ties with uh, with Jigen, and he was manipulating these people into believing the Otsutsuki were like their saviors and stuff. So it wouldn't be far fetched if they found some sort of like statues, iconography, or even Otsutsuki relics that Jigen directly gave in order to persuade the people. I wouldn't be surprised if, if there's some sort of Otsutsuki specimen of some sort, like the blood of another Otsutsuki or something that Amado used to test on to perform these said rituals that they're talking about, alright? So now, here's what we're gonna do, alright? As we look towards the chapter 69 and beyond and we look towards the future, we're gonna have to ask ourselves the main question. Is Amado going to get simp no jutsu or not? So is Ida just going to be able to walk all over the room and be big boss bitch and tell everybody what to do, right? Is she going to say, Amado, unlock this dude's limiters. Amado, tell us about the Otsutsuki. Amado, what are your plans with Kawaki? Like, is she going to be able to do that? Or does Amado have a failsafe or some sort of protection that will keep him from, like, spilling the beans or being controlled by his own creation, all right? So... When we look at that, right, immunity for the simp no jutsu, right, They're, the only way they can do that is by revealing Amado to be a blood relative of Ida's or by being an Otsutsuki himself, or maybe he has some scientific ninja tech that he's using to counteract her simping jutsu, right? So, firstly, we're going to eliminate those by least likely, okay? So, least likely thing is the blood relative thing for me, in my opinion, all right? I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's the least likely solution for this this whole thought process right because if ida is that like dead daughter right that amado had mentioned he had in the past chapters right then why not mention that you have a son right like damon's whole existence and his relationship with ida it really throws a wrench into this whole th line of thinking that amado and ida have some sort of familiar relationship where they're father and daughter or something like that it just doesn't feel right and it feels like there's too many loose ends and if they were they would have to do more writing to clean it up and to make it make sense than if they went with the route that uh, the other two options with like Amado either being considered an Otsutsuki of some sort or if he has done some sort of experiments on himself that keep him immune to her abilities through like scientific ninja tech, alright? Now here's the thing, we could easily go the easy way and say scientific ninja tech for the win and just go with a cop-out answer like that. Or we could jump on the bandwagon and we could say Amado is an Otsutsuki who's planning on stealing the powers of Ishiki or whatever because I know that's a theory that's out there, right? Or we could blend the two theories right now, where Amado uses science to experiment on Otsutsukis into creating new powers, alright? So let's jump into this thing, right? Here's the thing, Amado being an Otsutsuki or having done some sort of experiments, that's kind of uh, ridiculous. I know some of you guys might think that, but here's what we know. Amado has worked extremely closely with Jigen, or Ishiki, when it came to constructing the karma, alright? Now, Kawaki described this entire process as being one of Jigen's karma rituals, alright? So, we have a facility that we know Amado has ties to that performs these inhumane rituals. We know the Otsutsuki, uh, Ishiki, and Amado work together to perform rituals on tons of kids, alright? So... Amado, on top of performing and knowing how to create a karma, 
has information, like way too much information when it comes to the Yotsutsuki, all right? Now, if that wasn't scary enough, this dude is the one that provided Sasuke with the coordinates to the Tentails. So technically, he has access to the Tentails whenever he wants. Now, the interesting thing about the Tentails location is that that's where we learn of the two other Otsutsuki panels that were damaged. So does Amado know about those two other Otsutsukis? And then how did Amado, like what sort of tests and experiments did he do that allowed him to develop a drug that literally attacks the Byakugan on a genetic level, all right? So we're looking at all this stuff, right? And we're like, yo, Amado's got all these weird connections with the Otsutsuki that are yet to be explained. We have these cyborgs out there with otherworldly powers. And then we can't forget that Amado has been doing work and experiments on himself. Like he has his own augmentations. Like his eyes are confirmed to be scientific ninja weapons okay so now we're gonna try to make a connection where we can connect Amado to the Otsutsuki we can connect Amado to Ida now the only thing left is if we can make a connection between Ida and the Otsutsuki then all these things connect and we can have a nice little theory where it's like maybe Amado was able to experiment on some Otsutsuki specimens into creating the powers that Ida and Damon possess all right so when we look at ida right more specifically her eyes it's super important it's super obvious it's made clear as day that we notice that crescent moon dojutsu that she has right now the moon already has connections with the otsutsuki but her entire character design is very celestial like her skirt is planets and stars and then her eyes are the crescent moon so her whole everything already gives off these celestial vibes and the otsutsuki are confirmed as aliens celestial beings right so is it possible that in the past at some point that other otsutsuki could have involved themselves with or interacted with ishiki or kara as a whole all right maybe amado knows so much about the otsutsuki because ishiki had allowed amado to use another otsutsuki for like experimentation like to like study on and like to dissect him and stuff like because like all right here's the thing i find it so hard to believe right that amado was able to create these otherworldly powers like when it comes to ida and damon straight from just nanotechnology and scientific ninja tech all right so like he's created such a powerful visual prowess without the involvement of any otsutsuki anything all right so like that's strange to me all right he already knows how to attack the otsutsuki on a genetic level so he knows how to manipulate their genealogy now he has a new ten tails which we don't know where it comes from and then there's these two missing otsutsuki panels and ida's whole everything screams celestial now i don't know how we can connect ida to the otsutsuki but if it was possible that jigen or kara as a whole went out fought those two mystery otsutsukis in order to steal their ten tails that would explain where they got this new ten tails right now since it's clan law that you're not supposed to kill other members of the otsutsuki clan what if let's say uh ishigi jigen or whatever allowed amado to let's say experiment on these other otsutsukis so that way he could boost the strength of Kara, right? And by experimenting on these Otsutsukis, he was able to augment the strength of these cyborgs and create beings like Ida and Damon, who have powers that just seem so fitting for an Otsutsuki member. Like, imagine that we create a new Otsutsuki member and they come down to the planet with the ability to swoo the hearts of all of the inhabitants of the planet and basically force them to line up to be part of the God Tree, right? And then on top of that, their dojutsu lets them see everything that's happening on the entirety of the space-time spectrum that, they can, that they're in, or whatever, right? And then if we want to give it to another Otsutsuki, or this third Otsutsuki, whatever, doesn't matter, reflects any of attack that you can imagine trying to do, like... The Otsutsuki already are confirmed to be mind readers. They have, like, all of the dojutsu we've ever seen. And then on top of that, being able to compel lower life forms. Like, the fact that she says only blood relatives are immune and Otsutsuki are immune. What if it's because the she has that augmentation due to Otsutsuki experiments that were done to her? And that makes her more Otsutsuki-like. 
So the Otsutsuki are immune because it's an Otsutsuki derived ability and her blood relatives are immu uh, immune because she's essentially an Otsutsuki right now and her only other blood relative might also have Otsutsuki augmentations, right? Ooh, and then maybe that's why she's keeping secrets from Code because then Code would look at them as potential food for the Tentails and potential enemies and targets for his plans. So let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment section below. Do you think it's possible that Amado and Jigen, possibly Kara, hunted down two other Otsutskis, took them down, stole their tentails, recovered some DNA or some sort of specimen from them, and then created the Kara cyborgs that we see today? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. I hope it was entertaining for you. Uh, I'm the Grass Ninja, and I'm out. Peace.